Oh, that's such a long title. I'm talking about so many things and so many things that actually need at least an hour to talk about to really make it happen. So excuse me if I'm going to be very short with uh, some of these topics. And um, yeah, basically for me, how I really came to that was that I was trying to find for myself actually what I'm doing in this world and what my very personal purpose is and what my very personal contribution is and how I can be really authentic and do what I love in this world and at the same time, you know, do something for greater good. And my clicker is not working. <laughs> or do I have to point it somewhere? And before we do that, um, I want to invite every one of you, you know, exactly how you're sitting, just to, for one second, close your eyes and take three very deep breaths. Deeply in through your nose and out through your mouth. Deeply in through your nose and out through your mouth. Starting to settle and just kind of bring your attention inwards. And take one more deep inhale and open your eyes again. I think it's so, so interesting, we're in tech and what it means is everything is fast, we're doing 15 minutes talks, we have a lot of information, back, back there there's people talking still and for me that's a real uh, interesting sign and it's also a sign of this kind of world that we live in nowadays. A little bit about me, we already heard a little bit, but like one of my like real passions is to see how we can create a different kind of business world. And basically not only business world, but world. But I chose business because I thought, oh yeah, there's money and influence and you can really make big scale changes. So that's why I focus a lot on business world. But also because I have been in business world um, for such a long time uh, in different leadership positions and I kind of identify with the group of people that wants to get things done and has a time frame and a complexity and sometimes it's really hard to stay who you want to be. Right, you have a picture of that kind of person you want to be, but then it's sometimes really hard to stick with your own values and your own language. And instead of being political, sometimes we just are political because that's the game, you know. And um, and that's kind of what what really like bothers me. And also, I want to know what is the question or the the answer for how can we do this differently? And like kind of. One of the signals of our time is there's rapid change. The change is really rapid and it's gonna get even faster. It's much more complex and it feels like, you know, we still learn in school what I learned in school, but the change has, the change was so rapid in the last years that this world is just so different. And there's another thing, there's kind of this overwhelm and this overwhelm kind of comes from the fact that we have so much information, the fact that we can be online all the time, the fact that we receive much more emails, messages, and so on than we can ever read in our lifetime, unless we don't do anything else than that. And for me, that was really hard sometimes to cope with it, and no one spoke about it, so I felt like, oh, it's just me. Maybe I'm just like one of those who can't cope. And then I started speaking about it, um, and I found, 90% of the people said exactly the same. I feel the same. There's a lot of overwhelm there. And in the meanwhile, going into different companies around the globe, I can say this is a time, a signal of our time. Overwhelm is part of what is ongoingly happening to us, around us, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but the question is how can we still find stillness? And 
Like for this world, what we see is that the word agile comes around. Everyone says we need to change, transform into an agile organization. Now, what does that mean? Every, uh, all the rules we had before have to change and we have to be all agile. And purpose is, is really like a crucial thing, not only for companies and organizations, like why are we here, but also for us as humans. Why are we here as humanity? What are we actually doing with this world? And leadership is, is another thing that is really shifting. And for me, it's shifting into compassionate leadership. And for me, compassionate leadership means being of service. And it means the step from I to we, where leadership is not one person who leads, but every one of us can be a leader and can be in leadership. Because leadership for me is inspiring others. And um, the biggest part of it is that actually to create a new culture, to create new leaderships, we all need to learn new skills. We haven't learned them at school. People still don't learn them at school. Um, I like what um, the World Economic Forum is looking at. And they say like, all, like many of the skills we valued in 2015 will not be relevant in 2020 anymore, but there will be new areas. For example, emotional intelligence. And Jack Ma, um, uh, who used to be until recently, I think three days ago, executive chairman, says, we, everything we teach should be different from machines because machines will do all those other jobs. So he says, teach arts, right? Why do you need maths? Machines are much better in maths than, than humans. And so it seems like in this... Um, world where what we just saw in the talk before, machines go into their own evolution. It means we as humans have to go into our very own evolution. And what does that mean? How do we do that? What, what is it? And my answer for it is we can develop different skills to go into our own evolution. And so in the face of growing complexity and overwhelm, what we need is a new set of inner strengths, especially inner strengths, because if there's complexity and loudness outside, the only way we can find that is in the inside. And emotional intelligence is very interestingly one of those skills that goes directly there, just quickly what emotional intelligence can mean and is like part of what would what I understand about it, Daniel Goleman put five areas of emotional intelligence together. And it starts with self-awareness, which means I understand myself better. It also means I have the ability to reflect myself, literally looking at myself at the third person perspective. But um, yeah, so that's really the foundation of emotional intelligence. And then it comes to self-regulation. Regulation, I don't like that word so much, but it's really about choosing our reaction instead of being driven by what comes along in our way, which is a skill we really need even more nowadays. It's also about motivation. So what motivates me every day in this life um, to do what I'm actually doing? And it's about empathy. And empathy, I find it really interesting because empathy is, on the one hand, the, our ability to put ourselves into other people's shoes. But it's much more. It's also the fact that we actually all the time empathize. Right? Let's say you, go, you, you are super relaxed. Everything is fine on the morning. You go into a room full of stressed people. What we all automatically do is we pick up on other people's emotions very naturally. For me, that was a huge aha moment because I felt like, oh, that's not always my stuff. It's just something that I pick up. And so training empath empathy also means that I understand more and more what I perceive from others. It also helps us to be really compassionate because in order to be super compassionate, I need to know what's going on for me. Integrity and authenticity, I think that these will be skills that we need more and more today. And kind of also knowing what is our own purpose, what is our way. So we have kind of the red line while everything else is kind of getting crazy. 
And also resilience, that's kind of the skill. Like, you know, these are the days once in a while, we have the change, we have stuff, and sometimes it's like, wow, what's going on? Resilience is the ability to work with change, with disappointment, with things that are happening, also with failures. And that's going to be a skill that, you know, some people call it the AQ, which is the adaptability quotient. Right, and um, how do we do this? So one of my answers obviously is mindfulness, um, because I strongly believe that we can, this can help us as a tool to access what is going on with us. And for me, this is going out of the autopilot and being present, that's for me mindfulness. I show it to you differently, do you know the movie Matrix? You know, all these bullets come to this guy and he's like, oh my God, I'm going to die. And in that moment, he's like, wait a second, I'm in this matrix. I can change this moment. And then he takes this one bullet and all the others go down. That's for me, mindfulness. Understanding that we always have a choice, even if it seems like we're going to get killed right now. And Yuval Harari says, computers will outperform us. And he really literally means that they are going to be the next teachers, for example. And that might be scary, but I also love the fact that it might free us from stuff that we don't want to do anyways, which is awesome. And I still want to say one thing. This is like one of my former colleagues. His name is Mo, and he used to be the vice president of Google X. And he worked on AI, like, and, and one of the things that he says, so technology itself is going to use the values we communicate to develop its own intelligence. What he also says is, okay, let's say AI is looking at our world and how we create it today. What they will learn from us as humans is, you got to compete, you got to be better than others because that's what we value. They're going to learn exactly that from us. And I find it interesting that he quit his job to work on helping people to get happier because he said, we need to change that. We need to change the way, like the kind of the role model we create for machines right now because otherwise this is going to happen. And so for me, the biggest trend of digitalization is that we get back to what made us humans in the first place, which is our human connection and heart wisdom, and to use that for the greater good, but also to be role models for these machines coming. So let's rethink the way we do business and organizations and bring like-minded together and maybe even create a movement. Thank you.